the galaxy burns. The heretic falls. And the emperor protects. Welcome, Imperial Citizens. My name is Doug, along with my co-host, Dan, and we're talking about the Horus Heresy. Now, this is episode zero of our new show. We were both super excited to bring this to you. And uh, rather than having like a just kind of jumping right in, we thought we would do this episode zero so that you could get to know us, uh, kind of our our thoughts, why we came to the Horus Heresy, uh, about us in general, and so we can direct people back to this if they're just curious about the hosts and stuff like that in the future. Uh, so I will let Dan go first. Tell me about yourself, my friend. Sure. So uh, my wife and I live about a half an hour north of Milwaukee uh, in a small town there, and I have been playing, I played, started really gaming as a historical gamer uh, mm. way, way back in like middle high school uh, when this company called Avalon Hill that the really old Rognards here probably are aware of, <laughs> uh, the hex board, uh, you know, maps and everything else, and mm -hmm. so that really got me into gaming, as it were, and then several years later... In 1999, I bought a game called Space Hulk. Oh, okay. The the game was cool, but Doug, it was the it was the lore. It was the lore of you know the librarian fighting the patriarch of the Gene Stealer Brood, and mm -hmm. it was the kind of orig original origin story of the Deathwing. You know, and the and the planet they came back to their home planet and seeing what happened, and so it was really fascinating. And the same year, I also read my very first Warhammer book. It was called First and Only by Dan Abnett. It was the origin story of Gaunt's Ghosts. Oh, okay. And then shortly after that, I read uh, my first Space Marine book, which was uh, Ragnar, uh, which, mm -hmm. Space Wolf, which was a, the origin story of Ragnar uh, by William King. And between those two books, that really got it, me started on my Warhammer journey. Yeah. And then two years later, I built my first, built and painted my first uh, 40K army, was the Space Wolf's army. And the one thing that I found really interesting was that reading those two books, I knew there was something called chaos, and yeah. I knew it was bad. Uh, and But that's really all you knew at that point. There really was no backstory for chaos. There was no origin, like, what is chaos really? Where did it come from? How did it get involved? Mm. You know, what's, what is this Horus Heresy thing? Like, why are there chaos space marines? There was none of that until 2006. Yep. When everybody who knows about the heresy read their first, you know, probably read their first uh, book by Dan Abnett, um, Horus Rising. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all the previous reading I'd done, but in the years between, everything started falling together. And it was so, so cool and so enlightening yeah. to have all that stuff suddenly put into context. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so that was really cool. And then... Uh, in 2018, I started playing Age of Sigmar and right kind of dropped out of the 40k side uh, and been playing Sigmar for the last four years. Now, when you say dropped out of the 40k side, is that from a gaming perspective? Like, do you still yes. read the books? Oh, I'm asking. Okay. Oh, yeah, I read the okay. books. I'm an avid lore person, as I know you are. Uh, <laughs> so, no, my I have no 40k army anymore, and I'm just really focused solely on on playing Sigmar at this point. That's so That's cool. cool. And yeah. I do want to shout out. You do have a podcast. Do you want to go ahead and pimp yeah. that? Yeah, sure. It's called Cubic Shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, my friend Brendan Melnick and I are the hosts, and we talk primarily Sigmar. Uh, we try to throw in a few 40K and heresy things. We have different parts of the show, which uh, we find that we get a lot of positive feedback on. We have a main section where we talk about you know our gaming experiences, but we also have a, a section of the show where we talk about books and lore and you know other things that we watch and listen to. And then we have a part where uh, we just ask each other five random questions which is really i think a lot of people really enjoy that because even yes. we full disclosure here don't know what we're going to ask before the sec you know that part of the show so it's really kind of fun to uh, listen to that but um you know we we ask when people listen you know give the whole thing a try and see what parts and pieces you do like and come on over and listen to cubic shenanigans so we'd love to have you yeah I can recommend it is a show that uh, if I could put it into everyone's podcast feed the second they <laughs> so kind of the second they start playing AOS I would um, you know and I, the reason yeah you, know, you may already mentioned it is just you get 
it's more than just tactics talk and all that other stuff. It's, you know, you feel like you have some uh, friends in the game circle. So I really appreciate that. I try to do the same thing here on my channel. Great. Um, well, that's awesome, dude. Uh, so for me, let me just put this thing down here. I'm kind of, I was kind of halfway gluing something together and then it got stuck and destroyed. <laughs> um for me, my story uh, really actually, I got into the hobby with War Machine and Hordes like way back. Mm, sure. Um, loved that game. And then I noticed more and more I, I was drawn to like the narrative and the artwork. And that was just never a game that was as conducive to storytelling. I mean, just in the mission design and that kind of stuff. It was just its own thing. Um, it's neither good or bad. It's just what I realized more and more. It's like, oh, this is the exciting part of the hobby. So I jumped over to fantasy battles just in time for that to get nuked into oblivion. And I was there on the <laughs> on the ground floor. And uh, I, yeah, I, I, the day after I bought this really cool looking book called End Times Thankful, I was like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, um, God. But that is all right. Uh, so essentially, yeah, I jumped in at that point. But then I had a ready uh, army that was ready and painted day one that aos dropped and i have just been i've been loving that game and the setting it's my kind of fantasy um uh, very out there kind of crazy artwork and stuff and um yeah and then i started uh doing a youtube channel because everyone was so upset about the release of age of sigmar and i was like well this game is cool and someone needs to talk about it and I, i'm not the hero we deserve but i guess i'm the one we needed so uh <laughs> <laughs> that's great so yeah, I started talking about that, and I have now a, a full-time career doing YouTube, uh, Channel 2 Plus stuff, if you want to check that out. Absolutely. Most, yeah, and I mostly stick to fantasy-type things, because that's generally what I like. Um, well, I'm going to you know kind of shout out your show as well. The thing that I love about 2 Plus stuff and the lore coverage is, really, I don't read much of the lore when I read battle tomes, you know, about armies and stuff. Right. So when I know a new battle tome has come out or something else, I go to 2 Plus stuff, and that's my version of the lore, so I can find out everything Aww. I need to know from you <laughs> well thank you i do yeah. appreciate that it's um yeah it's it's been great i've expanded into some other games too but yep. for the most part age of sigmar is where it's at so sure uh as far as horus heresy though my first exposure to 40k stuff uh i think my first book was you mentioned it last time we chatted it was the gray knights omnibus i believe oh, sure yeah ben counter. uh yes ben counter and i i read a bunch of those and i had no the only thing that stopped me i was a kid i was like 12 and i was like that guy on the cover looks freaking awesome and it was like a space marine oh, of course yeah, yeah. So good and so I just digested that book in a weekend, and um, oh my, God. yeah, and you know, 40k as a as a game, not really where it's at for me right now. I think it's a little bit, it's a lot to learn yeah. on top of other games that I play. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah. Um, but the Horus Heresy specifically, uh, I think, has always been a very interesting concept inception in 2006, just because um, it's less of a setting, which I think 40k is. It's a setting, a sandbox that you can play whatever you want. But to me, the Horus Heresy is a story and i and you can follow a story and you can have characters and lose them and all kinds of stuff because it's a linear story so uh that's kind of why i got here and you reached out about doing this kind of show and i was like heck yes dude <laughs> yeah and i think it's appropriate that we give some credit to at least from my perspective two yeah. people that i know mm -hmm. uh, inspired me to you know have this discussion with you a while ago and that is uh dave Whitech and greg dan uh they had a show called um, after ulanor and when we talk about the books it'll be very obvious why they called it that uh yes. but they just did these super deep dives into each and every book and it was just fascinating to have somebody talk about the stories Yep. and what the books were and, and give their opinions and their thoughts. Uh, so I, I think really for me, they, they were a real inspiration for doing something like this. And Greg still has a, a 30K Heresy podcast called um, Imperial Truth, if you cool. ever want to give that a listen. It's really, really good. A lot of times they talk about their hobby and the models and stuff, but you definitely can find out whatever is going on in the Heresy when you listen to that. And um, I've been listening to him for a long time. That's awesome yeah it's a uh, I, I i guess we are sort of a, a light spiritual successor because yes. if you've if you've ever listened to an episode of after Eleanor, like they go beat by <laughs> agonizing beat i mean i and i say agonizing not in the way that it's hard to listen to but like it's just exceptionally detailed and so yes. yeah. i can't fathom <laughs> yeah, I how much work <laughs> we had talked about our approach is going to be more of a story forward kind of a thing uh where we hit the the most important points 
the things that you need to carry through to that next story and, and as part of the, the milieu as a whole uh, and and go from there um, rather than the deep dive. Just just an alternative kind of approach, I think, to the heresy. Yeah, and I mean, you know, in my, my content, if you're not familiar on 2+, Plus, when I talk about lore, it's always with the mindset of, how do I explain this to someone who has no freaking idea what I'm talking about? And so, yeah. you know, going page by page uh, typically is not the easiest way to learn information, but you step back and you go, why is why does this matter, right? Like, right. big scale type stuff. So, um, but yeah, great shout out to those channels for sure. Um... Let's talk about. We're just gonna move along here. We're gonna t- we're gonna cover how the show is gonna be formatted and all that kind of stuff later on. But I thought this would be a fun little back and forth. Um, so Dan, tell me about your favorite Legion. Let's, <laughs> let's get to the meat of the questions. What really matters? So people uh, can write you off, put you in a box. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have two. So the first one is White Scars and. Mm. Really, I wasn't much aware of them until I read the book Scars uh, by Chris Raid, and then he wrote a, a second book, which was another Scars book called The Path of Heaven. And I was just hooked on this chapter, on their primark, on their story, because of the way their chapter, their loyalist chapter, for those who don't know, but the way they survived their own internal rebellion. Because a lot of the loyalist legions that turned obviously went the whole way the scars were on the precipice you know and they came back and i really admired that about them Mm. Uh, and then when i read warhawk which is a a siege of terra book it was just it just validated my choice (laughs) because they're just awesome and their primarchs off and the other one is space wolves because Mm. of certainly you know starting to read one of my first books was the ragnar origin story and then i read all the ragnar books um but i just love the way that they are not what they first appear to be, um, including their Primarch, Lehman Roos. And I just love the fact that they are, uh, they're much more complex. They're much more, uh, and just like the Scars, I think in a lot of ways, Doug, they're very independent from the Imperium. And I like that in a Space Marine yeah. Legion, as opposed to, say, the Ultramarines or the, um, you know, Rogel Dorns Legion, the Imperial Fist. Uh, they, they're, they're Imperial, but they're not. And I really like that aspect of both of them as well. That's so, right. Yeah. So no, no love for any of the Chaos sides, right? No. I, I uh... have one legion that i have a little bit of uh, i guess sympathy for not or not empathy sympathy for um which would be thousand sons just because yeah. of the way everything happened to them and why it happened uh, when we talk about the books but otherwise no i, I have characters now i have chaos characters that are but no legion mm, so interesting okay so how about you? how about you uh for me i my chosen legion it has to be word bearers um i tend we're, we're going to be a house divided because i my two <laughs> choices are are the uh word bearers and uh, the Sons of Horus, the you know, he, he, they changed the name a couple of times, uh, but what Wolves, ultimately yeah, becomes, yeah. yeah, the the Black Legion. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Abaddon is. Yeah. For oh, uh, for those not familiar, the Word Bearers sort of are like the first heretics. Um, there's a whole book named that, <laughs> but yeah. essentially, uh, I like the topics and themes that they explore, where mankind just has this innate draw towards worshiping things. And mm. of course, if you don't know, that we're gonna get into their story and stuff like that but they worshiped the emperor as god at a time where he did not want to be worshiped as a deity and so he censured them or punished them he had the ultramarines come over destroy (sighs) one of their planets embarrass them and shame them for it and they essentially started looking for something else to worship because that's just how they understand the world and uh you know they they found a couple things to worship so (laughs) that set a few events in motion but (laughs) um yeah i I find their story very compelling because it just tackles a lot of themes that i find very very interesting in my life okay uh and then for the uh the sons of horus it really is just a descent into madness you start to see when you read the first book in the horus heresy uh horus rising you start to see the groundwork of how these great noble heroes just kind of start to to churn and there's nothing that can replace that. I think Fulgrim is another great book, although it does the same the same heel turn into chaos, but it does it at a much faster pace, <laughs> I would say. 
um but the the long story it's kind of like breaking bad right you start at a pretty good place and then you just watch someone become the ultimate villain and it's like uh, mm-hmm. all right <laughs> yeah we're locked in now and it's full of great characters as well yeah and some of these legions and primarchs they went over pretty easy like Ye- yeah <laughs> i mean like, there wasn't much for them to to go dark it really wasn't yeah and as opposed to some of the others that really struggled uh, to to make the choice so yeah and it's it's interesting as we'll talk about it sometimes the how easily legions fell to chaos was planned by horus Mm-hmm. and manipulated so there's there's kind of a it's all murky it's not one of the things i like about the horus heresy is it for most of the legions dispels the idea of like bad guy is bad because mm. of reason you know it really does give us some context there's conflicts internally uh with every single legion but even just character to character of like why they went to chaos yes it's just terrific so i i super appreciated reading about that for just about every one of them the only one that i'm like super not into is world eaters from a chaos perspective how about yourself anyone that you're just like i'm just not a fan of the imperial fists at all really because i've got a couple of loyalist primarchs that i just despise and rogel dorn's one of them Uh, i can't stand dorn uh so um you know as we'll talk i mean sigismund is one of my favorite characters because of his troubled relationship with his primarch who is dorn um i love that sig Sigismund made the choices he made to take a different path. Um, and so it's like kind of, you know, finger to you, Rogel Dorn. It's like, yeah, okay. I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not an Imperial Fist fan. How about you? Uh, the big one is World Eaters. That's definitely the big one where I'm like, I just, I cannot connect. Because uh, of all the legions who do seem very one-dimensional, they are it. Um, and, and we'll still talk about them, of course, on the channel and that kind of st- or the show rather. But uh, they just, you know, it's just they're just whenever a faction looks like it's it's looking too much for a reason to be evil, I'm like meh. Yeah. Um, other than that, I also, I mean, I like Dorn just because he punched Garrow in the face, so he's got my vote on that one. <laughs> See, Garrow's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Like, you jerk. Something's wrong. Shut Wait, up. The guy. <laughs> I mean, Doug, he locked up his own librarians. I'm like, what is your problem, man? You know, that, but that was just how Dorn was. So, yep. um, Very yeah, exacting. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, that's why, that's his saving grace was that particular scene where I'm just like, oh, I have yes. definitely had days like that at work where someone gives you bad news and all you want to do is just throttle them. <laughs> <laughs> true yeah oh man that's cool uh what are the um are there any particular themes that you like to see explored you mentioned some stuff with the um the white scars but how about the space wolves any any particular like stories or themes that stand out to you for that i think really the it's going to be a combination because i think it's really the dual vision that we get when they invade prospero and they attack the thousand sons hmm because you you see them as one thing and you really only see them relatively briefly in Thousand Suns. Yeah. But then when you read Prospero Burns, which is their side of the story, you get such a different picture. Yep. And I think that's really where I started uh, understanding in terms of the context of the heresy. I mean, I read mm-hmm. the Ragnar books, so, you know, it's all Space Wolves, Ragnar, and, um, Space Vikings and stuff, but when you understand their Primark better, which that book gave you that understanding. For sure. And uh, you understand them as a legion better mm-hmm. than when other things come up. There are other books later, like really near the end of the, the regular heresy books, where there are these really, really deep dives into Lehman Roos and his journey and his legion behind a, a wall that you've never seen. And I really like that about them. So um, that's... I think something I'd like to explore as we're talking is this is who they appear to be. This is who they really are. And as we've mm-hmm. talked before, it's truly intentional, too. Oh, know? of course. Uh, but it's really cool to see that other side of them, which I don't think a lot of legions honestly have that dual, no. um, you know, appearance um, to everybody else and then their own um, self vision or self. Yeah, it, and that's the thing. Some of the horse heresy books are very simple stories right you just you have a fixed perspective and you just have to trust whatever uh and then some of them break into 
very heavily explore the unreliable narr- narrator and i think that that is an exceptional <laughs> yes. job that like that's the achievement that space wolves and thousand suns do is mm-hmm. just competing motivations but also just lack of information you know those two books it's the same battle but when you look at them from different perspectives mm-hmm. it, it's night and day and you can absolutely understand why they hate the heck out of each other but they're both validated in some way yes. for <laughs> that hatred <laughs> they're both noble in their own yeah, theory, which is really cool uh, to see that such a dialectically opposed thing. Uh, one other thing you talked about things we like to explore, and I think as we talk about the show, some I know we've talked about the fact that there's going to be crossover, the heresy and 40k. Because, oh, of course. Um, yeah. But one of the things that as I'm reading um, the Indominus era books. One of the things is the custodians who are really central piece to this, but they're not really a legion. Um, there's a lot of pre heresy stories, you know, of them uh, before the emperor even became the emperor. Um, and, and their evolution as an organization, uh, I think, is really interesting. And their participation in the heresy is really interesting. And how they've changed now. I, I just talked about. Uh, how in this series that they're doing Dawn of Fire, the custodians are absolutely nefarious. I mean, these guys are just conspiratorial, like, mm-hmm. but you never saw that. Of course. You yep. know, and it, I thought it was fascinating to see that change in how they're written um, as an organization. So that would be something sure. else I think would be worthwhile taking a yeah. look at. And and we are going to, uh, just to kind of throw it out there for people, we're going to be talking about 40K uh, as it becomes relevant. I mean, because it just... It is a lot. And, you know, when you talk about, you know, not just why certain legions are heretics or loyalists, but rather, like, why, what's up with the Blood Angels? Why are they so weird? And, like, well, they're, it's a very detailed, I don't know, impactful story is what I'm trying to say, where it's like, sure. daggum. You learn that and then you're like, huh, okay, well, I guess they get a pass. Everyone's allowed to be weird after some tragic thing like right? that. Right, right. But, you know, it, where it has ramifications 10,000 years later, like, because it's these epic narratives of the past that define their worldview and their tactics and their strengths and weaknesses and all these things. So it's it's very cool. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's move on to uh, chatting about our favorite authors. What do you got here, Dan? Um, Graham. Graham McNeil is mm. one of my favorites for sure. Um, Dan Abnett is, and of course, yeah, everybody picks Dan Abnett. Really, but Dan <laughs> is not a favorite because of the heresy. He's a favorite oh. because of the God's Ghost books. Which Interesting. Which I okay. was introduced to him. Um, so, you know, I saw he wrote this book, Horus Rising. I said, like, oh, great. Mm-hmm. You know, here's another Abnett book. I'm just going to pick it up and read it. I, <laughs> just because it's him. But I like Graham's style of writing. Uh, so he's another favorite. And then uh, somebody who I think, I don't think a lot of people know about Ben Counter. You know, you mentioned him writing the Grey Knights uh, yeah. omnibus. But I like Ben too. And I like mm-hmm. his style of writing as well. Uh, so when I see he has done a book, because he hasn't done, a, he didn't do a lot of heresy books. No, no. He kind of reserved on that. Yep. So I I find him uh, very enjoyable as well. Yeah. And uh, I think, unfortunately, a lot of people probably know Ben Counter for the book uh, Battle for the Abyss, which is probably one of the weaker Horus Heresy books. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they, right. not everything's going to be gold. It's whatever. No. no. But uh, in actuality, he actually wrote my favorite Horus Heresy book as well, which is um, Galaxy in Flames. Wow. Galaxy in Flames is when yes. stuff gets real. <laughs> <laughs> like like really real <laughs> um it's you know the i mentioned before that for the sons of horus the the journey from loyalist because that was the only option before to heretic was kind of a slow burn but we really get to see how all these things affect and change people and book three is when that switch flips <laughs> in, in a big way so i always thought that that was one of my favorites uh and flight of the eisenstein is right there behind it as being an incredible book yeah so So, um okay so you got dan and and graham absolutely ben counter shout out for both of us uh james swallow wrote fly the eisenstein still one of the best absolute best books uh because it's just a roller coaster um beyond that you know a lot of these authors they had like a stable team of authors so you'll see them writing a lot of books in the series Mm -hmm. uh there's not not as many that they have just one-offs i guess gav thorpe only has a couple here and there uh, I think uh, John French didn't really become a favorite of mine until, and we'll talk about this character, he wrote the Aramon series. Yes, Aramon is awesome. <laughs> and I read the first book, and I'm looking, John French, like, I know the name, I read something of his, mm-hmm. and then I just got so 
hooked on that, obviously because I'd done, and for those who don't know, he's a Thousand Sons main character, very important. And uh, there was a series written about him kind of post heresy. And uh, that really got me on the John French. And I know John has written, I think he wrote the, the lead book for the siege, if I'm not mistaken, I can't quite remember, but I think he was the, uh, yeah. I mean, for those yeah, listening, right there's six, bookshelf. there's yep. 60 freaking books. We, <laughs> yeah. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, so I want to ask you, do you have a few, couple few favorite characters, individuals on either side that you like in the, in the heresy? Hmm. Um, specific characters. Uh, Gavriel Loken is, is oh. the, he, I mentioned before, like the first three books are, um, linear. They happen one after the other and they're from largely one perspective. And that is Gavriel Loken, uh, who is a loyalist who's seeing all these things come together and we get to learn with him just how the gravity of, of what the heresy means. Uh, and he was just a great character to introduce us in that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Garo is, I think, my favorite loyalist. Garville oh, yeah. is up there, but, but Garo is just, and when we talk about the book, you know, that there is actually a heresy book called Garo, which is a collection of stories about him. Yes. Uh, which is really, really cool. And then uh, to your word bearers, I really love the character Argal Tal. And we'll talk about him when we talk about the book First Heresy. But mm-hmm. I just love his journey, his transition the struggles he had <laughs> yeah uh, he he definitely even though he's uh you know on the horus side i still really love him as a character yeah and and there's a bunch of little ones that like uh erebus is a character of the word oh. bearers that everybody hates erebus <laughs> yes I, I raise my hand when you ask yes <laughs> yes 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 um but also like in terms of importance it's hard to understate his importance in all of these oh. things i mean he set so many he's basically if you're at home and they don't know who that is think starscream from transformers <laughs> like <laughs> the little turd on the side who's not in charge lorgar is the primarch but there's a strong argument that he lit the fire I mean, very strong argument. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, no question. So, um, but Lorgar is also just a, a favorite. His yeah. his journey, and uh, when we get to the the Battle of Calf, he is just savage, but he's also very collected in a very creepy way. <laughs> and I always appreciated that when they wrote him yeah. that he he always had his himself kind of together a bit. Mm-hmm. How about yourself? Any notable characters for you besides yeah, uh, you um, said Garo and and Argotal? Argotal, yeah. Those are my two main. I think. Yeah, those are two. I mean, there's several, as you said, there's several minor characters. Yeah, Loken is definitely up there. Uh, as as the stories evolve, you know, they bring more characters in. I certainly enjoy. There's and again, there's some that I just can't stand. The <laughs> uh, Erebus is. I mean, Erebus was written to be hated. There's just no question in my mind. Oh yes, yes. That yes, they yes. got together and said, "Hey, we have to have a guy that everybody hates." Yep. I mean, I, I think people on the chaos side, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, he's he, he... despised. <laughs> Um, yeah eh, you know but, but it's okay you know everybody has a favorite and those kind of things so now yeah, those those are the two that come out right away in my thoughts and mm. um, now here's a question do you have any primarchs that you straight up don't care for besides dorn you already mentioned dorn besides but... dorn i don't know i find fulgrim kind of tedious oh the the book the character yeah. no the the primarch okay uh, fulgrim it, it just you know and of course i mean he's supposed to be arrogant i get it uh, that's, <laughs> that's his thing you know but he just he's i guess he's so predictable to me you know exactly mm. what he's gonna do exactly how he's gonna act what he's gonna say and i'm going oh god another fulgrim scene all right i know how this is gonna and it just like Okay, yeah. next. <laughs> so I, I think he's that. another one that I, Primark wise, it just no. I, I don't need any more Fulgrim. Uh, <laughs> and I guess it, one last one is uh, it, this is great that we're having these kind of opposing opinions about stuff. I because I like Argel Tall so much as a word bearer. I think that's one of the reasons I dislike Lorgar so much is because the way Lorgar, you know, his journey and we're going to talk about caused things to happen to his legion, and it's all to me. My perspective is that he manipulated his own his own sons to get his own things done you know very selfish in that way oh, and yes. when i think about the suffering and everything that happened to that legion um because he wanted to get his thing uh whatever it was uh that just always and that changed obviously we're going to talk about the first heretic but at first 
No, I'm all, you know, when the emperor, you talked about uh, the emperor, you know, humiliating his legion. I'm just like, well, Lor- Lorgar, go do something, you know, make yeah. it happen. And then when he started doing something, I'm like, this is great. Like, good for you. And yeah. I was still on board with him. But then as the book progressed, I'm going, hey, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you just made a wrong turn, buddy. Like, yeah. <laughs> You just turned down a one-way street and you're going the wrong way. Like, oh, okay, I, I think I pass on you now. Yeah, um, I guess. How that. about you with with least favorite? Um, for least favorite, you know, I'm actually looking forward to rereading a bunch of the the Primark books with this because on the whole, I think a lot of them are kind of bland. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I also I also know that there's been publications out that I have not yet read, so I'm hoping that they will shine a little bit more light into things for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Ultramarines, literally all of them, but Lehman, of course, um, Reboot Gilliman, yeah. just, yeah. Uh, it, you know, I understand the need for having like the poster boy paladin, but it's just, <laughs> it's just boring. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's, that's the biggest one. And that's what, that's honestly why I like the Betrayal of Kalth so much because <laughs> it's word bearers versus my least favorite Legion. Like, yes. <laughs> mm, but, um, yeah, that's the biggest one, and of course we'll have uh, minor characters in every book that we're gonna probably do the same thing with. But because it's really hard to be like, I like this one, you know, uh, historian that exists in the first book, and you're like, well, he never comes up again. He was old then, so you know he's dead. So like, you know, it's so weird to <laughs> some of those minor characters. It gets hard to fall in love with. <laughs> right, that's true. That's true. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, right on. We'll move right along here. Uh, this might be an obvious question, but. Have you chosen a side? Which one and why? Uh, yes, I, <laughs> I choose Imperials. I yes, choose yes. the the Emperor side only because lesser of two evils. Mm, okay. There, there was a a book. I, th- I, mean, I think one of the things you and I have talked about, just to segue for a second, in terms of what books, because there's a bazillion, as you mentioned. Yes. I'm not going to cover every book, but one of the ones I think is worthwhile is called The Outcast Dead, mm-hmm. and it's interesting and I think it's useful because it gives this bigger picture of what was going on and what happened that really turned, you know, made me think lesser of two evils is this one um, astropath has this vision before he dies and he sees this uh, empire and every planet is just like infested with ants, like hmm. these huge giant mega cities, you know, kilometers into the sky and these people are just st- Stressed and suffering they're just getting by and there's just billions upon billions of humans piled up and it just drives him mad to see this was the future of humanity hmm. before it was the future of humanity he, i mean this is like 40k time you know yeah and to see that i'm going oh man this imperium thing it's it's not gonna work out so good <laughs> like i know chaos does some pretty bad stuff but this isn't a whole lot better like no so that kind of made me uh, but then again, you know, you read stories where there are these planets infested by chaos and you see what they do to the human population. Yes, yes. No, no, uh, 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 no, no, no. I, I'd rather live in a in a hive city than on Gathalamor or somewhere that's infested. So, yeah, that, that's my side to pick. And, okay. Because I have to pick a side. So. <laughs> because, yeah, there's no there's no middlemen. There's no Switzerland in the grim dark future. You're not giving me that room. So, I'll, okay, I'll go there. Uh, um, for me, I have firmly uh, chosen chaos. Mm-hmm. Not so much because I think that the the end goal of having demons erupting forth and all that stuff is particularly good, but because the seeds of why many of the traitor legions fell mm. is valid. Like for the word bearers, they were strictly told there are no gods, which is not true. Like it is, it is patently false. <laughs> and rather than taking the time to instruct and and discipline his people, even at the cost of being revered as a god, which he ultimately was anyway, which is so bizarre. Yeah, yeah uh, the the emperor himself, uh, I, I think, through his lack of teaching, set a lot of things in motion because um, he didn't prepare them. He, he at the end of the day, he just did not. He lied and he didn't prepare them. Um, you know, and of course, at at some point, all of these legions go from looking like 
you know, normal space marines who just have a, we'll say, a different ideology. And then things get really, really messed up. And all of a sudden, you got Nurgle dudes. You got <laughs> Corn Berserker. You know, it all changes, of course. But the initial seeds of the heresy, I'm like, I'm behind that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be a part of this party. I don't know if I would hang around until we all start using snot from every orifice. But I'm going to... I'll ride that ship for a bit. (laughs) So I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was on the agenda, but you just made me think of it. So you are going to turn to chaos. Which chaos god are you going to serve? Uh, I believe that I would do Undivided. Uh, So something like Abaddon um, with the Black Legion. And uh, I really love the Iron... um, I get all the names. There's so many Iron names. Iron Warriors is the chaos one. Yeah, Yeah, Iron Hands is the Legion. Yep, okay. Yeah, Iron Warriors with with their... uh, undivided leader just because i i do honestly i do the same thing in aos i like the idea of a pantheon rather than a single soul deity sure um Sense. same thing with word bearers they extol the virtues of all of them rather than just one uh, if i had to pick a chaos god though i would definitely go nurgle <laughs> mm-hmm. so uh as a means to not scapegoat your question i would definitely go nurgle because okay. you know He's consistent. <laughs> I feel like Zinch teams is on a whim. Slanesh is never satisfied because they're always looking for some new thrill that gets real weird and people on the internet can't handle it with maturity. Yes. Uh, all kind, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, Absolutely. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the jolly guys who just, yeah. just chilling. <laughs> they just want people to be happy. I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's all I want to. <laughs> why can't you buy into that? I mean, come on. That's hilarious. That's great. How about yourself? If you were to if you were to be stricken with a chaos affliction, what would you go for? Um, it would be Nurgle as well, and yeah. I, I say that because of all the chaos armies in AOS. If I was going to build a chaos army, I would build a Nurgle army. It's a strong choice, yeah, for yeah. sure. And I just I love the origin story that you actually don't find out until very late in the heresy. I know it came out so books. late, <laughs> uh, but when you find out that just. Kind of like, you know, there were other Loyalist Primarchs who got turned. Mortarian really wasn't a Chaos guy until another character brought it in. I mean, literally, he is the one, this other character who infected the Legion, you know. And you're like, wow, that's really crazy. But then as you're, to your point, you know, as you're reading stories about Nurgle, it's all about, hey, come on, man. It's it's happy time. Let's have a up, bro. Yeah, it's hilarious uh, the way they caricature Nurgle, Nurgle people. For sure, yeah. I, I, I always thought that that was a really uh, interesting story. And also, it makes me think of one thing that we're, we are going to be exploring is not just the Primarchs, but also their second-in-commands. Mm. Because for so many of these legions, the second-in-command is, sim- is equally, if not more so, impactful than who's actually in charge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, see our discussion on Erebus and Logar or Aramon and uh, what's his putts? Uh, Magnus the Red Magnus, for yeah. Thousand Sons. Just so many times, especially with the, I feel like with the Chaos factions a lot, the guy who's in second place is like, you know, a real mover and shaker, and that's to the detriment of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you say that, that is a fascinating thing to think about and maybe talk about in the future. But when you think about the legions, the chaos legions are really the only ones who have strong second. Think about yeah. it. You know, I mean, because you have like Eidolon for Fulgrim, you know? Yes. You have that, you have uh, Corferon and Erebus are kind of, they kind of tag team on Lord. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely do. You're right. And you have Typhus for uh, Nurgle. I mean, so it's interesting that they have, but you don't find that. Like, Lehman Rus doesn't really have a second. Yeah. You know, um, Gilliman doesn't or any of the other loyalists. So that that's kind of, I had never thought about that before. But yeah, yeah, and that's true. And and the one loyalist chapter that does have a strong second, which is the, uh, oh my gosh, Dark Angels. Oh. It's he's only he's only important because he turned to chaos. Yes. <laughs> and he's one of my favorite characters too, Luther. Just yeah. Because we talk about the book, man. Oh gosh, yes, that's true. That is yep. true. Yep. So I always thought that was really cool. Just like they gave him a cool, you know, the tails to his Sonic, and he just turns out to be a raging tool. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. Oh man. Uh, okay. Well, awesome. So that's that's. You know, our, our get to know you information about us, where we stand on the heresy. We will look forward to conflicting ideas, me justifying terrible atrocities, and Dan being like, For the Emperor! 
sure. And that's how we're going to do it. So as far as our uh, intentions for this show, just kind of going through that, we know we're going to cover books one through four for sure. Like yes. without question, um, they're perfect because they are chronological. And after that, it kind of veers into a choose your own adventure based on what <laughs> uh, what legion you want to learn about. But the first four being linear is very helpful for us introducing the Harris. Um, yeah, of those four. So that is, uh, let me get the names here. Uh, Horus Rising, False Gods, Galaxy in Flames, and Flight of the Eisenstein. Mm -hmm. I'll put a small asterisk next to Fulgrim because when that one ends, if I'm not mistaken, it's it meets back up with Flight of the Eisenstein, I think. It's been a long time. Yeah, but I have a, it, it's been forever for me as well. So. Yeah, Fulgrim kind of goes backwards a little bit and I think catches up. But then from there, it goes off the rails. It kind of just jumps around time and sure. space, literally. But uh, so we're definitely going to cover those. Of those four, do you have a favorite? Mm -hmm. I have definitely not one of the first. If I have to choose one of those four, I would say Flight would be my favorite. Yeah. But Galaxy in Flames is really close because of Garrow. Garrow being introduced. Is a you know central character. Really, his his story goes over to Flight of the Eisenstein, and so I guess I guess Galaxy and Flames would be my favorite of the four. I, the, now that I think about it, yeah, it's a it's a tough one because I feel like Galaxy and Flames and Flight of the Eisenstein, it's like a part one, part two. Yes, kinda, if they made a movie, that's what they would do for this for this trilogy. Yes. Is Agreed. it's four movie trilogy because <laughs> that's yeah, what we right, do now. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, Fly the Eisenstein is amongst those four is my favorite because it's just a nonstop roller coaster of action. And then it has my favorite scene with Dorn at the end. So, <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> Got to get that in there. Uh, well, right on. So we're going to do those. Uh, uh, what other books are you excited to cover? Like specific novels? We're not just going to do novels. We're going to pick out, you know, scenes and characters sure. and stuff. Sure, and weapons and all those kind of things. Uh, I think uh, First Heretic, you know, the origin story of uh, the word bearers is a favorite for many reasons. It's kind of funny because uh, my wife, you know, listens to some of the stories while I'm listening to stuff. And um, I've listened to First Heretic way too many times. Uh, <laughs> but there's a character, a young woman named Cyrene. Mm -hmm. And Cindy just loves. So whenever oh, really? we listen, she's like, is that Cyrene? And she'll come in the room, you know, to listen to it. Yep. Um, so I think First Heretic is a book I definitely want to make sure that we, we talk about. And obviously it's very important. I think Legion is another one. Because I think Alpha Legion is very, very, uh, as they should be, mysterious as yep. a legion. But that's a great origin book, too, in terms of understanding their primarch and what their function is and why they chose mm -hmm. how they chose. Um, they're, they're a legion that if I had to pick a Chaos Legion, I would pick them uh, just because of they never really went to Chaos ever. Never. They, yeah. they never accepted a chaos god. They never did the pantheon. I mean, Alpharius was always just, I'm going to side with these guys, but never never went over, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah, I think I think when it first got launched, Legion was kind of like this odd man out book because mm -hmm. it wasn't, it's not nearly as action-y as the first four. Yes. Um, but you're also not talking about a Legion that is action-y in the same way. Like Alpha yeah. Legion is, is a vastly different like departure from the way Astartes normally act. So we will we'll cover that. But I love that that was reflected in their story. Like they're just different. <laughs> and um, I think the other thing that was interesting about that is, I, if I'm correct, I think that's the first time we were introduced to Perpetuals who are these humans who've been granted literally immortality. Yeah, I think so, because it was... Uh, Dramaticus. Oh, I, Dramaticus. Dramaticus, yes. I knew it was, was John. Guy, <laughs> and I, I can't remember them ever talking about that before, so it was really interesting to understand. And then, obviously, as the stories come up, uh, the other one that I think is uh, a must for us is pretty much the last book, which was Buried Dagger, which is the origin story for Nurgle, you know, when... When mm -hmm. the Death Guard turned, um, yep. when they turned Nurgle, not when they turned Heretic. Uh, that that to me was such a revealing book in so many levels. Yeah, um, absolutely. So how about you? Other, what are you thinking? Um, there's a, there's a few like books that really bring to life some of the events of the Horus Heresy. So uh, what is it? Prospero Burns. We've already mentioned mm -hmm. that one for mm -hmm. the Thousand Sons is a fantastic one. Uh, there's one just called Talarn, which if you didn't know. <sighs> 
I don't I don't know a ton about it, but I know it's the largest deployment of tanks. Like that was like its sales pitch. I'm like sold. <laughs> um, largest deployment of tanks in in Imperium history, which is cool. Uh, and then also literally anything to do with Kalth, um, which is essentially mm. word bearers versus ultramarines. But the way that that, that no happens, fear, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. No, no yeah. fear. Uh, but essentially, it's it's just a, an incredible battle story, and between um, <laughs> at the time, even though like the events have already started of the heresy, the Ultramarines didn't know, and so <laughs> just through a mer- various reasons, they didn't catch the memo. <laughs> <laughs> right right and so when the, just the the detail that forge world put into and black library but they have like a campaign supplement for battle of Kalth. <clears throat> but uh the detail they put into the surprise attack and this super intricate trap and stuff it's just very to me i love learning about it yeah so um those are the big things for me is the betrayal of Kalth and then uh talarn and then of course obviously siege of terra those kinds of very big oh, sure. milestone moments yeah yep. cool. so okay um let's see we're going to discuss uh the different we put here organizations because it's not just legions of course there's oh. imperial right. navy there's the mechanicum which is not the mechanicus there's a difference <laughs> right. uh because you know it's cool to better to trademark two words that are similar than one. See what you did there, G Dubs. <laughs> yeah, right. And I think one of the things you talked about that I think it'll be fun to explore some of the smaller. You know, we get these anthologies, mm-hmm. and a lot of people just poo poo them, but I think there are a few that have stories that are really important. For example, that whole thing. When did the Mechanicum become the Adeptus Mechanicus? Right. And there's a book literally that talk. There's a short story um, called it's. I think it's in the collection Burden of Loyalty, and it talks about when that happened. Uh, so those are the kind of things that would be of interest too. But yeah, Mechanicum, I, Custodians. We already mentioned mm-hmm. as far as organizations. Is there? Well, there's a lot of others, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's there's quite a few. Um, Titan Legions, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. My thing with the. I'll be honest, I tend to favor short stories over long novels. One, I can crank them out way faster. But also, <laughs> uh, on, a, on a better level, it's just there are just some things that like you just need to have the mood. And, and I think short stories are great for setting the scene for like the tone of what's going on in a particular area without having to commit 60,000 words to it or something like that ridiculous. Sure. And so I love that kind of stuff, like getting into those. But yeah, so yeah, definitely going to read through those because I'm very excited for the the short stories uh so as far as how the the show is going to be formatted going forward like i said this is more conversational just to get to know us uh but really what we're going to be doing is like a topic introduction you know we're going to have a main topic for the show uh list off any books or source references again we're not agonizing line by line book by book but if there are several books or whatever that cover a specific topic we will definitely let you know in case you want further reading and homework Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, uh, why not? Yeah. Um, then we'll jump into our main topic for the day. Uh, and one thing I wanted to add here on the end was listener questions. Perfect. And I do these a lot on my YouTube channel of just asking people constantly, if you have questions, let me know. Uh, and you can ask those questions. I'm going to be posting these episodes to YouTube on my channel, so you're more than welcome to leave questions there. Uh, also, I have a Discord for 2 Plus Tough, and uh, I will leave a link to that in the description. Go head over to the Horus Heresy channel, drop your question. Might not get to it immediately, because some of these things require a lot of research, But, you know, it's all, again, the whole point is just educating people. If you had no knowledge of the Horus Heresy, where do you start? That kind of stuff. Um, And that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm hoping to do. Perfect. Do you have any questions or like that kind of stuff you're you're interested to answer? No, I that's that that looks like it's what we had talked about. That's perfect. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll close out each episode by, you know, kind of pitching what the next one's going to be. So if you do have yes. questions relative to a specific topic, like if we're talking betrayal at Kalth and you want to have a specific question about a word bearer or ultramarine thing, please, 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 please drop it off there and uh, we'll, we'll get to it. So uh, any anything else you want to add, Dan, here in our episode zero as far as just getting ourselves ready for the journey? No, I'm just so excited to be able to do this with you and uh, to kind of revive a little bit um, interest in the heresy. I know on the gaming side, there's a new version, you know, 2.0 coming out at the same time. So uh, maybe some new people will be introduced to the concept of the heresy and the story and so forth. I hope we can help those folks uh, understand a little bit better the 
the story, as you put it, yeah. versus the setting. And I hope veterans of the Harris, he as it were, uh, will find this of interest again for something to remind them of things they may have forgotten or uh, just to kind of reignite their, their love of the story. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to to jump in this. Actually, let's ask that real quick. So, uh, from what I understand, you're not terribly uh, interested in the gaming side of things. Just, no. it's just you're a huge fan of the lore. Right on. Oh, absolutely. I um I'm somewhat interested in the gaming as long as it doesn't get uh, too bloated, like I think a lot of the things do with 40k. Um, mm-hmm. But also keep in mind, one of the reasons that Horus Heresy has been a beloved way to play uh, Warhammer is because, honestly, it's just like 90% Space Marines. It's like, oops, all Space Marines, the serial. And um, <laughs> yeah. and part, that it lends itself to better balancing when everyone kind of starts at the same position. And of course, then you can add in weird units like Possessed and stuff like that for the traitors. And... Mm-hmm. So I, I am going to be trying to do the gaming and... Uh, painting up some models i think uh when i do get the starter set i'm i'm really thinking about dividing that into uh, word bearers versus ultramarines for oh, a cool. diorama I, oh nice yeah um but yeah i think that would be really cool so you know you'll have some of that discussion here as well when it comes to the games and if there's a really cool release that matters for our conversation we'll cover it <laughs> oh yeah absolutely i think that's a, a great idea if there's new stuff for heresy we make it part of the show that makes perfect sense yeah yeah so speaking of which i think right now games workshop is doing a big preview for oh no it's not heresy that's the next week oh, okay <laughs> spoiler anyway well, you're right because uh, i think they started at 11 today yeah i remember yeah so we'll have to see what it is so anyway um like i said leave questions for the next episode we're going to be talking about uh horus rising the first book of the horus heresy series yep, yep. Uh, I'm very excited to get into that. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments and Discord, whatever one is easier for you. Um, Dan, any last thoughts for the uh, for the audience? No, just come back for episode one. I think you're going to find it really uh, interesting and really useful. Uh, it's always great to me, Doug, to hear actual people talking about the books rather than just listening to, uh, you know, just kind of regurgitating the information. Yeah. I actually started to give opinions and agree and disagree and those kind of things so i think that listeners would be a really really interesting part of uh learning about the heresy from the ground up so nice okay well thank you all so much for listening and we'll catch you next time the emperor protects